we continue with our discussion on equity valuation unit 2 and now look at specifics around uh, broadly how do we go about looking at cash flow calculations and interpretations and the usage of methods which is FCFE versus FCFF based on what industries we are looking at or what kind of companies we are looking at right then we extend this analysis into live cases where we pick up a certain set of companies and try and project data for them right so in this particular segment we're going to look at how do we arrive at the cash flow calculations recall that DCF is going to be the present value calculation of all these cash flows that we see for a company and we're going to discount that at a certain discount rate we've already done the calculations for the discount rate or understood or recapped how does a discount rate work we are now going to extend our discussion in terms of how do we identify the cash flow we have also already seen the formula for cash flows right FCFE versus FCFF and we have seen that we start with the net profit we go to the depreciation we add that and we then adjust for changes to networking capital and capital expenditures and net debt in the case of FCFE in the case of FCFF we start with EBIT and then do three changes but remove the debt change so there's no change in debt taken in consideration when we are looking at free cash flow to firm right now how do we find future cash flows under discounted cash flows we are supposed to basically find out future cash flows now future cash flows would depend on this equation practically right so for this equation we need revenues we need to find the revenues for next year minus costs is effectively going to give us net profit right and assuming that depreciation is a non-cash cost and it's a part of the cost so we have projected that so we need to project the revenues we need to project the costs then we need to project working capital requirements so minus any change in net working capital and then we need to project capex requirements so minus any capex or capital expenditure and then we need to project debt requirements so plus any change in debt and that's what my FCFE is if I'm doing a calculation of FCFF then I don't need this and in this I make a small adjustment to to use EBIT instead of uh, net profit right so practically the most important crux of this discussion is we have to go ahead and look at these five steps we have to look at revenues we have to look at costs we have to look at working capital requirements capex requirements and debt requirements eventually for any given company right now when we look at uh, look at let's say something like a, a revenue requirement let's let's try and uh, take a couple of cases we're going to work in this particular subject on on a couple of companies let's start with how do we calculate cash flow projections for a company like ultra tech cement right so what does ultra tech cement do it will manufacture and sell cement so when a company like ultra tech cement manufactures and sells cement so you have to project volumes for the future years which is how much cement will they sell right and you have to find out what is the average price what price will they sell it at let's say they are going to sell 100 million tons and they're going to sell each ton at an average price of 5000 rupees per ton right so can I find what is going to be the total revenue that's the total revenue that we are looking at for this firm right we can therefore find the sales or revenues by multiplying the volume with the price each calculation of revenue for any given firm will eventually boil down to this kind of an equation right now think of a company and try and identify what is it that we are looking at in terms of volume what is it that we are looking at in terms of price that gives us the revenue calculations from there we arrive at the cost of operations we find out what are the major costs and we then try and project those costs right we try and project those costs so mechanisms will have to be used to figure out what is the 
uh, what is the, let's say the raw material cost what is the power cost and fuel cost and so on and so forth and try and base them on the perspective of what is uh, what is going to be a specific uh, per unit cost that we are going to look at right so here we are trying to find out what is the price per ton we can also find out what is the cost per ton right look at the major costs and try and project those once we project those we will arrive at the cash flows let's look at another company let's look at Infosys so what does Infosys do they are into software services how does the business work? Revenue is based on the number of people getting billed on projects at a certain billing rate, right? So how do I project the sales of revenues? Let's say Infosys has 100 people. Out of this 100 people, 80 are getting billed on a project, right? And the billing rate, let's say per hour, is fifty dollars per hour right per hour how many hours in a day that's eight how many days in a week or how many days in a year so typically you will work for 250 days 250 is the number of working days per year so you have 80 people who are getting billed $50 per hour is the billing rate, 8 into 250, and that will give you the dollar revenue. Correct? You can multiply it with the INR USD rate and arrive at the INR revenue. So what is important? The first part important is number of people working. The second part important is how many are getting billed. So this is, in a sense, the proportion of people who are getting billed. The third part important is the billing rate. This is straightforward. The fourth part important, so these are three, is the INR USD rate. These are the key ingredients on how do I go about projecting the sales or revenues of a services company or a software services company. We also then find out the cost of operations. Now the major cost for services firms being the cost of staff, you have to try and find out what is the staff cost. right? I can also do that because all these 100 people are getting paid salaries. So I can find out salary per person from the equation that we are looking at. So in a nutshell, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out how does the company do a business. right? And so one of the most, two of the most important parts in this calculation are these two, which is how does the firm make money and how does the firm spend money? The first one is your revenue drivers. The second one is all your cost drivers. And then you have working capital requirements, which can come from sort of understanding on how much revenue a company has. Remember, usually firms try to keep working capital stable as percentage of sales. So we can try and find out if that relationship exists. CapEx is a direct component of how much is your fixed asset versus your sales, right? So. If I want to increase my sales in the future, I will need more capacity. For those more capacity, I will do a fixed asset calculation. And then debt requirements will come from an analysis of the capital structure of the firm. So if the firm needs 500 crore capex and usually operates with one is to one debt equity ratio, then you can find out that 250 crore debt and 250 crore equity is going to fund this 500 crore project, correct? So those are the ways you're basically going to go and project discounted cash flows. Now in the course of this program, we're going to basically look at a couple of companies and try and do this detailed calculation around discounted cash flows and understand how these discounted cash flows work. The next part which is important for us is to identify which model do we use. 
Now, in an ideal case, if you are doing FCFF, this is going to give you the firm value. From the firm value, if you subtract the debt value, you should get your equity value. On the other hand, if you are using FCFE, it will directly give you an equity value. Now, under ideal circumstances, if you've done this properly, then the value found here, let's call this 1, and the value found here, let's call this 2, 1 should be approximately equal to 2. It can't be materially significantly different. If they are different, then we're doing something wrong, right? So ideally, you can use either method, and uh, you should arrive at approximately a correct value. But, uh, similar values using whatever method you use. However, remember that FCFE is usually useful for companies with low or stable debt requirements. Why is that? If we go back to the formula of calculation of FCFE, there is an ingredient in terms of changes to net debt. If this is easy to project, then you use FCFE. When is this easy to project? When you have low or stable debt requirements, which is debt equity is a proportion and it kind of follows year on year, right? If that is not the case, if this is difficult to project, then it might just make sense to look at FCFF, right? So for companies where this is difficult to do or companies with higher debt or changing debt where projection of debt year on year is difficult, there you use FCFF. As a thumb rule, use for firms with sizable debt as a percentage of overall funds. When you have sizable debt as a percentage of overall funds, you're going to use FCFF. Otherwise, stick to using FCFE. Right? FCFE is a straightforward method that you can use if uh, the firm has low or stable debt requirements. So that's broadly it in this particular specific video. As we come to the end of this particular video, a couple of quick questions. What kind of companies would you use FCFE for? And just pick up a company. And if you were to project the cash flows for any company, what would be the most important parts of doing this? And try and arrive at the equation of the revenue drivers and the cost drivers, right? revenue drivers and the cost drivers. It is important for us to understand the business. The most important key in this entire exercise is to remember that you understand the business. Valuation is an outcome of being able to understand what business the company is working in, what business the company is performing, and how do they make money and how do they spend money. If you can get a grasp on this, rest of it is more procedural in nature it will automatically flow it is important to focus on this part while doing valuation right so that's it in this particular video thank you